Now, back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. All we always need to hear both sides of the story. We need to hear both sides. Both sides of the story, whenever possible, it's The Law Show, and we aim to do our best here on CIL 650. I'm Sterling Fox. In studio with me, Joe Murphy and Alex Sign wittgenstein from Murphy Batista LLP uh, in Vancouver. Uh, we're talking about wrongful death, and uh, just to get a handle on this, we talked about this still current law in British Columbia which places no value on human life in terms of claims for death for people who are uh, seen to be or not seen to be of economic benefit to our society. Bizarre law. But let me go, Alex, help me out with this. Uh, I want to go back a while. I want to go back to the O.J. Simpson case just to understand the whole concept of wrongful death. We saw that Bronco driving through Los Angeles, and he had a gun, and it was a, a circus. And that wasn't half of it. The circus was at trial. Lance Ito, the judge, O.J. defended by the Dream Team, and all that really was a circus. At the end of the circus, O.J. was pronounced innocent. He was, he was cleared of the charge of murder. So, okay, Sterling, I, I want to jump in there. Okay. He wasn't found innocent. The court didn't find him guilty ah. beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. Didn't mean he didn't probably do it. Ah. But it meant there was a reasonable doubt, and my reading of the coverage of that case is the jury concluded it couldn't believe the police. Right. And the evidence essentially all came from the police, and that's how I think the jury said we can't convict him because we just don't believe the police. Right, and you're quite right to stop me up on that, but I think from a layman's perspective, yes. if you're not guilty, you're innocent. Yes. And that's the conclusion that I leap to, but you're quite right. He So the, the family of the man that he murdered takes him to civil court and charges him with wrongful death where he's convicted, Alex, and uh, uh, so how did that happen? How do you get to be uh, uh, acquitted in criminal court and yet found guilty in civil court of basically the same charge? Yeah, the the, the criminal um, finding of innocence won't be binding on the family in the civil proceedings. Joe, Joe talked a bit about it in that the court... Uh, in the criminal trial, couldn't find him uh, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay. In a civil case, so personal injury case, wrongful death case, it's a different standard of proof. The plaintiff, in that case, the uh, uh, the family right. of, of, his, of his wife, uh, has to prove that it's more likely than not that uh, O.J. Simpson caused the death. And that, so different standard the criminal matter isn't binding on them. They managed to meet that onus. And in that case, there was a judgment in the millions of dollars. Right. Uh, so there's, no, the there's no prison possible because it's a civil case. Is that also part of the deal? Yeah. There's not a finding of guilt. There's a finding of liability. And they, they put a dollar value on, on, uh, on how much uh, he owes in, in terms of damages. Do we have similar practices in British Columbia, Joe, uh, in terms of families who, uh, where someone is acquitted for whatever reason of a criminal uh, a activity, where then in civil court there is a different finding? Yes. Uh, the, the criminal court operates on the basis of beyond a reasonable doubt. So if you want to say percentages, it has to be 98% chance that he did it right okay uh civil courts 50.1 percent the other thing is in a criminal court if some things were done wrong by the prosecutor if a blood sample was taken or a breast sample was taken but it wasn't done properly if right. a person wasn't warned of their rights key evidence sometimes gets excluded from the trial True. and that results in a person not being found guilty but again in the civil the civil standard of care is that 50.1 percent so it's a different measure, and you can be found not guilty in a criminal court, but found in a civil court to have likely done something. Uh, in, the, in the O.J. Simpson case, is he likely caused the death of 
the, uh, the, the estranged wife and, and that and other poor fellow that's who right. was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. Let me uh, shoot another example in your general direction, fellas. Uh, slightly more recent. Okay, very recent. Uh, those of us in Vancouver know the scenario well. Th this happened on a bridge in Seattle a month or two ago. One of those tourist duck boats uh, apparently had a broken axle, uh, flew across a couple of lanes of traffic, plowed into a bus full of uh, foreign students, and four of them were killed. Presume, uh, it's, is it safe to assume, Alex, that out of that horrible traffic accident in which loss of life occurred, that there would be one or more wrongful death suits? Uh, undoubtedly. Uh, I don't know uh, the specifics of the law in Washington state, but uh, I have zero doubt that it's much more liberal uh, than it is here in British Columbia. Okay. Even if this, this was uh, uh, brought in uh, British Columbia, there would uh, likely be some Family Compensation Act wrongful death cases that, that would, would be brought with the limits that we've, we've talked about. Um, Joe was uh, just mentioning, uh, however, how the, uh, the courts will sometimes uh, recognize in certain situations that a, uh, it's possible that a child, especially of certain ethnic backgrounds, uh, there may be an obligation on the part of that child to, in later life, provide some sort of financial support to the family. Okay, now in the case of this bus accident, Joe, uh, the kids were, uh, they've just been in, in Washington State for a few days. There were foreign students from South Korea there to take a language program. They're going to be for, well, they were just getting a tour of the city, just getting to know you. And in this car accident that occurred, four of them were killed. So would the parents of those children or those students who were killed, they would sue the bus company for wrongful death. That would be the, the bus company and the duck boat company and, and and uh, by, from what I understand, it was the duck boat that went out of control. That's true. Apparently there was an axle broken or something. Right, so right, exactly. That, but using BC law, if you could show that these children would have likely grown up and in later years have supported the parents, then there is a claim under our law for that loss of support. But the claim is quite modest. If the loss of support is years and years down the road, the amount that's awarded today is even smaller. So the assumption would be that uh, these young students would return uh, after graduation to uh, to their home country of South Korea, uh, develop a career, and as is the custom, uh, help with care for their parents uh, in their old age. Yes, I, I know that the Japanese custom is that the oldest son is obliged to care for the parents when they need it. And, and I knew a fellow, Japanese, very um, westernized, but he moved back to Japan because his parents needed uh, him to be there to help them. Interesting. So it's it's a very strong cultural expectation. And if that's the case, then under BC law, there's damages. But again, the measure of the damages is small. Yeah, those, those cases uh, rarely uh, make it to, to trial because the amounts would be so small. Because let's say it's someone who's 15 years old. The parents in the immediate future would still be spending money oh, sure. to send them to university. Absolutely, and so, yeah. so using our uh, our economist model of uh, calculating damages, they'd have to deduct that from whatever would then be uh, perhaps given to them 30, 40 years down the road. And that amount, because it would only be uh, obtained 30 to 40 years down the road, has to be go through all sorts of economic models to be heavily discounted because the person's getting the money now instead of having to wait 40 years to get it. So it ends up being... Uh, much less? Much, much less. Ah, okay. What happens in a case where there's a wrongful death, where, where someone um, uh, is killed as a result, say, of an accident similar to that duck boat accident, except the, in the case, uh, in the, case of the example I'm trying to bring forward, a person is killed as a result of an accident, but there was also the person who was, say, driving the bus was also killed. And, 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 and this case, fault has been determined to be that of the driver of the bus. But that person is, is, was also killed in the accident. Can the family of, of the student killed in the accident sue the bus driver or the company, even though the bus driver was also killed? In other words, can you sue a dead person? Uh, you can. And I'm talking about if this happened in B.C. I'm sure it's the same in Washington State. But there's two things the family uh, would likely do. Number one, they'd sue the company. Right. 
uh, because the company is liable for any wrongdoing by its employees. Right. Number two, you'd sue the estate of, of the driver. And the estate itself is then uh, liable for the negligence of the of let's say the the wrong the wrongdoer driver who has died. Mm-hmm. Um, you might think, well, the estate may not have any anything worth worth pursuing. Well, that's uh, true. Uh, but there usually is something worth pursuing, and that's the insurance policy. The insurance policy of a dead person will still apply to that uh, and provide uh, coverage for the estate of of the wrongdoer. Okay. So if the person, when they were driving, had $2 million in coverage and that, that person was at fault for the accident and dies, a person injured by him in that accident can sue the estate and that estate should have that $2 million in coverage available to pay out uh, for that injury. And Joe, what happens if the damages to the to the person hurt by the now deceased bus driver exceed the two million dollars for which the person carried coverage are you just out of luck or is there another uh, avenue uh, to top it up unless there's more insurance or unless these people you're suing have assets now a bus company is going to have assets True. the driver who's deceased may have assets but uh, it is difficult to recover assets because if people know that you're going after their assets, that the insurance isn't enough, chances are by the time you get a judgment, those assets have sort of disappeared. So it, it's far easier and far more practical to be recovering from an insurance company uh, that has the money set aside to pay the claim as opposed to chasing someone for their assets. Alex, you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation with the, we're just talking about the concept of wrongful death, you applied it immediately to a medical malpractice context rather than my, I, I went to the OJ trial and, and the duck boat thing down in Seattle a few weeks ago. Um, is it more likely to occur in a medical malpractice scenario than it is out on the streets and the highways? No, I still think it's uh, more likely to happen in a motor vehicle accident than in a malpractice uh, situation. There's uh, dozens of accidents every day in in BC, many of them uh, quite serious. Um, There's... BC has uh, its fair share of malpractice uh, cases, but um, the the deaths caused by negligence in a malpractice setting are still... uh, considerably lower than those uh, that arise in an accident. Curiosity question for you, Joe Murphy, before we take the break, going back to that tragic story of the grandfather and his three grandchildren who were killed in that uh, van accident in Ontario by someone who, according to news reports, flunked the uh, the, 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 uh, the breath test rather badly. Yes. So, uh, in, in this case, uh, would his, if he's proven to be over the limit... Would that negate his insurance coverage? And if so, where would the money come from that the family of these now deceased children uh, who, who are looking for compensation? Sterling, it's common in the private insurance industry to have a breach such as drinking and driving right. void the policy. Right. But one of the uh, great features about ICBC, and this is part of the great job they do in providing insurance coverage for everyone, is the ICBC uh, a policy um, is that if there is a breach, the victims aren't victimized further. So if someone's got $2 million of insurance and they're drunk as a skunk, that is a breach. Right. But ICBC still pays out the victims. They then turn around and say to the, the driver, um, you owe us $2 million. Uh-huh. And may or may not ever recover anything. But that's good news because it doesn't victimize the victims it looks at the person who who was responsible for the breach. Now, if you're in another jurisdiction like Ontario, where uh, if his insurance, the breach of terms and conditions by driving drunk would would cancel his insurance, are those people looking for compensation in a wrongful death trial? Are they just fresh out of luck because he's got no insurance anymore? He blew it. Yeah, like BC, Ontario has coverages when you buy your own insurance coverage, you can buy coverage that extends to another driver if he injures you or your family and doesn't have enough or any insurance. Oh, like our... We have it underinsured motorist protection, ump. the UMP. That's right. Uh, they have that in Ontario, too. So, it, and 
and it's invaluable in BC to have the excess ump pay the other twenty four dollars a year, right? And get it because it protects you and your family. And uh, so, in, in in terms of take home lessons uh, already from the program, we're already back to square one with ICBC and the twenty four dollars a year that every British Columbian can be charged for uh, this uh, ex, ex, it's excess underinsured motorist protection. Have I got it right? Yes. And 24 bucks, two bucks a month will cover any and all contingencies in a wrongful death scenario. For you and your family. Up to $2 million. Amazing. For two bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Think about it next time you get the new sticker for your uh, license plate tag. We'll take a quick break. It's The Law Show on Sea Isle 650. Lots more still ahead. Stay with us. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CIO 650.